Good afternoon, everybody. So my name is uh, Alex Goldberg. I'm uh, head of the international program at the, the Porto School. And uh, thank you for joining. The goal of the meeting is to, to give you the overview of the program and uh, mostly to, to answer the, the questions. So that, that will be the, 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 the outline. So I give you a little bit background of myself. I, I'm by training, I'm a food engineer. And uh, afterwards I did a PhD in biomedical engineering. I was working at, uh, at Harvard's uh, hospitals. And over time during the career, I just saw that the uh, environmental issues are really pressing and, uh, and concerning and uh, it changed the fields. And so that, that's why I'm a faculty at the School of Environment. And uh, as you join us, and I hope you will join us, you will see that a lot of students are coming, are coming really with the different career backgrounds and different views of what they did before. But there, are, there is like a common uh, determinant here is that everybody is concerned about environment. And that's really what we try to do in the program is to bring people with different backgrounds and different views, but to trying to solve together the environmental issues. Now, how do you solve them? You need some tools. And uh, the program is uh, the task, the program aims to give you those tools. So that's very briefly what we hope to, to achieve in the program. Now, pay attention that the program is very brief. So it's one year. So you get the master's degree in one year, and then you go from October to August. So you will accumulate, accumulate, accumulate the knowledge. And uh, afterwards, you will have the final program. And those of you who would like to stay for the thesis, you're mostly welcome too. So we have a gradually growing number of students who decide that they just want not only to, to listen and to get the knowledge, but also to apply it and they stay for, for the thesis. So that's very, very briefly an outline for what's, uh, what's uh, happening, what's going on. And uh, I, I will show you that uh, some information. So the presentation and records you also have available if you would like to listen, again, listen to it again afterwards. So again, welcome to, to the Tel Aviv University. We are the largest Tel Aviv, uh, university in Israel, so 30,000 uh, students, and we are already at 2,000 international students, 400 labs, so we have 125 school departments. So in comparison to Israel, we're, we're a, big, uh, a big place. So, so many, many different departments. We are very interdisciplinary university, and inside this, Interdisciplinary University, we are the most interdisciplinary school since we are working with almost uh, all departments and all fields of study since all of them are relevant to, to the environment. So some numbers about uh, Tau, you can, uh, uh, you can see here about the choice, we're number one choice of students and uh, 16 faculty citations impact and so forth. So that's really important. So you're coming to the place where people actually do the research work on the environment myself, for example, we're doing work on waste and waste processing and we develop processes how to convert waste into energy and uh, plastic. We also do work on uh, seaweeds, we have marine operations. So people actually are doing the work related to the environment and we also teach and we, uh, that this is part, uh, part, of the, part of the program. So about the international program that highlights, this is, as I mentioned, accelerated one year program, three semesters uh, in English. We are uh, trying to give as much as possible multidisciplinary approach to enable you and to give you tools to address the environment, environmental uh, programs. And uh, we are trying to pursue different environmental topics. So we are really going into fields which deal with both marine sciences and just urban sustainability and then environmental law and then some process engineering and waste maybe. So we're really trying to cover many topics. So we go very broadly. And so this is one of the uh, strong phases of, uh, of the program. An additional part, which is also important is the hands-on uh, approach. So I will touch in a second, but you will have opportunities for internships in the environmental organization. So that not only that you learn the material, but and you write and you do presentations and there are a lot of presentations and papers, but you also have an opportunity to actually go and uh, practices and get the first-hand experience on, uh, on, the pro uh, on, on the environmental issues. And uh, on addition to this, we, the, the program is uh, quite merged with the, uh, also our uh, uh, Israeli Hebrew-based uh, Hebrew program. So it's an opportunity for everybody to meet new, new people. And that's, again, one of the big advantages since you meet people and you will meet people from different disciplines and usually 
cores of international students we have over the, the years are very united. So it's a lot of help both between students and you really work as a, as a, as a group. So this year we have a growth. So we have 26 students from 14 countries during this year. A, about application requirements and costs. So this information again will be uh, available everywhere. So either you approach Leo uh, or, my, or myself. So we accept students with all backgrounds, BA, BC from accredited universities uh, globally. So here are the numbers about GPA, which you need to, uh, to reach. We require proof of uh, English and we require two letters of uh, recommendation, one from the academic uh, or university faculty member and the personal essay, which describes why do you want to join the program. Uh, Cost funding, scholarships, the information uh, is uh, is here. So the cost is regular as a regular cost for the uh, budgeted program uh, in uh, in Israel. About uh, the curriculum, so we're based from. Uh, so we have several courts of courses or several uh, bundles. So we have introductionary core courses, seminars, and elective courses. Core courses include uh, fields such as environmental policy, ecology, urban sustainability, economics, food systems, and so forth. Elective courses, uh, water policy, environment, uh, marine systems, additional ones. The real and important part of the program, which differentiates us quite a lot from a lot of others which are there, and we know that they are there, are the field trips. So this, in these courses, you actually go to the field uh, where it can be the desert or it can be the Mediterranean shore and you work with the instructor and with the professor on, on, uh, in the field there and you see how actually the environmental things happening and how to address them, how to measure them, how to study them. So all this uh, happens within the environmental uh, lab. Uh, the final project, so this is the final task and the, the, the demand for the degree. So allows you to integrate uh, everybody, everything you learned in the courses and to address and to analyze why environmental uh, uh topic you you choose so about the internship this is again additional parts as i mentioned we have the field trips and the internship internship is the four months position with one of the uh israeli environmental organization can be the ngo can be a company so we have a broad spectrum of the organizations which uh, offer those positions and they allow you actually to see how the things work uh, in the field. And for those of you who will not be tired at the end of the year and would like to go deeper and really do some, uh, some work, we have the thesis track. So this is an additional one. So you graduate, you finish, you get your MA degree. Afterwards, for those who decide they want to stay for one year more and uh, do the research work, there is an opportunity for the for the thesis. And uh, this is this time it's actually very easy since you've already done almost all your courses. You need to do one course more, and uh, you can devote a year to to do some re uh, research in uh, the field of the subject you you choose and on the subject you choose together with your uh, supervisor. That's an optional one. So what do you do with the degree? That's like, uh, the question. So we have graduates in, uh, involved almost all, all, all branches possible, which deal with the environment, starting, I think, from governmental organizations and going to the startups and pri private companies to venture capital. So it's really, really a lot of opportunities. Remember, these opportunities are based also on your previous education. So environment gives you, you another step on your career but so people who were working in finance and then they learn about uh, environment they can go to vc which fund, uh, funds now uh, startups in the or companies in the area related to climate uh, climate tech or food tech or whatever it will be people who come with the uh, other skills so eventually they can pursue career or even do career switch but mostly what we see from our graduates they stay in the in the same area where let's say this use the same skills they have from the undergraduate degree but use the uh, the uh, skills they get into in, in masters to actually upgrade levels or switch to closer to the positions in the environment they they uh, they're more interested in so several jobs uh, of our graduates uh, uh, are here but really there is a very very broad spectrum of uh, of positions one of the tools, if you, uh, if you have LinkedIn, you can join in, uh, our LinkedIn group and see graduates for the last three years where they're now and what, what they're actually doing. So that's a very good opportunity also to, 
to to network with them so that's as i mentioned all types of things from from startups to independent ones so here are some of our graduates what they have to say about the program on the right are the members of my research group so, so is doing postdoc uh, so he's from india and he already likes us so much that he's already on the fifth year here Sidak was a student in the international program and uh, this this one he did the main environment and then he stayed to actually do very heavy engineering work and develop processes for waste conversion to, to energy and arthur was my phd student from from france working on uh, food uh, and seaweed for food and now he's in remilk remilk is the one of the largest uh, emerging companies in the field of uh, alternative milk or fermented milk so that, that sort of uh you know we have people coming from uh, from everywhere and that's that's what we have to to say about about the the program Lee, do we have Yes. Now we have two of our students that can will talk a little bit about their current experience. Uh, we will start with uh, Leila. First phase. Yay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Leila. I'm originally a fifth phase from Buenos Aires, from Argentina, but I've been in Israel for almost five years uh, now. And uh, I decided to start this program because of my career. I've been working in a volunteering hub, uh, working with nonprofits from all over the world, as I was helping them to, um, to design projects for social impact. I saw that the trend in the past few years was always uh, related to the environment, like when tackling environmental issues, um, they were also solving uh, their social problems. So I realized that as much as I wanted to help and I was helping them uh, through my position, I was really lacking knowledge uh, and I was looking forward to go back uh, to study and get that uh, formal academic knowledge. And that's what drew me to study this program. Uh, I really liked it because all the multidisciplinary um, disciplines and mix that uh, Alex just mentioned, because I knew that coming from a different field, it will be nice to, uh, to learn different things uh, to apply in different projects. I work as a project manager, so it's not that I wanted specific things. So, um, so far, what I can say about the program, we started, we started in September, so it's been only five months. Um, I'm loving, first of all, how even though it's multidisciplinary and we have super different uh, courses and topics, all of them really push you to be a leader. Um, don't expect just to go and take notes, but in every class, uh, we are really pushed to do presentations, to lead debates, to be active members uh, and participate in class. I think that's great. And that's what really helped me to feel like I have, I'm participating in class constantly and they are preparing me to give pitches and preparing me to be able to speak about environmental issues. Um, I'm living in the dorms of the university, which uh, I strongly recommend if you don't already have, uh, if you don't have already uh, an accommodation in Tel Aviv, I strongly recommend because it's very good located. First of all, you're like in the university, you don't have to wake up so early when there's class at 8 a.m. But also it's super central, there is a direct bus to anywhere in center Tel Aviv in 20 minutes you're in anywhere you want. And also during the exam period you're in the university, so I'm meeting with friends that are also living in the dorms and we study together and it feels nice. And also, I forgot to mention, it's not like the dorms that you expect in American movies. It's very chill, very Israeli style, where people it's older. So it's not party vibe. It's very, very chill and quiet, uh, which is very nice. And um, what else? And I'm, I am working and studying both things. So I remember like a year ago, I was asking these questions in the chat. So I just want to say that it's something doable. I'm working part time. That it's a uh, three days a week, I'm studying three days a week. So it's only one day that they overlap. You just really need to have good time management skills and be able to do it. But I think that it's totally doable. Uh, I still have a social life, so uh, you can manage. And uh, lastly, I think that it's great that we come from different parts of the world and different age groups. So I strongly, oh, sorry. Um, 
So I strongly encourage you to like come. And I think like I've never, I ha I would have never thought that I would feel so close to people that are like 20 or 30 years older than me. And I'm relating to them as co-students and working together and tackling the same issues and having the same passions and interests. I think that it's great. So it's one of the good things of the program. And uh, if anyone has any other specific questions, I just leave my email then in the chat and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Leila. Uh, we get uh, this question a lot, whether you can combine uh, studies with the uh, working. <laughs> so thank you for the insight on that. And now we will uh, go to Diana. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Diana. I'm from Germany, from Hamburg, to be exact. And uh, I already do have a bachelor and a master. I was already working for four years in an international company in an HR department. Like I was doing something completely different, but I always knew that my passion is with environmental topics. So uh, I decided for an active career change in order to get the best possible knowledge and background for that career change. I um, decided to do another degree. And I decided for the one in, in Tel Aviv University because I was really intrigued by um, the fact that interdisciplinary and international, because I really think this really diverse and global issue of environmental topics um, can be discussed or really well discussed in um, yeah, international groups, obviously, with different perspectives. And I do have to say that um, talking to the fellow students really opens my, my mind. I came from my bubble of environmentalism, but I now realize um, that there's so much more to it. And I really recommend um, the degree also because of that, because it is just, um, yeah, giving you a lot of perspectives. And of course, also Tel Aviv, the city itself, uh, I just fell in love with it. So uh, that was no question about uh, having a good time here in Tel Aviv as well. Um, so, so far, I can say that, uh, yes, it, the degree is one year and it's an intense year. It's um, three, uh, three trimesters, so to say, um, and it's uh, a lot of input, which is really interesting on various, uh, various uh, diverse topics. And then, as, as you've already heard, you have the opportunity to write the master thesis. Um, and what I like is also that we have the electives that we can choose from and just see where is our interest and what do we want to do um, in the future or what are we just interested in now so that you can um, select accordingly. And as we've also already had, the field trip is one of the electives and I'm really looking forward to it because it's combining the theoretical and the, and the practical. Um, and you can just see how diverse the topic on our environmental uh, studies is. Uh, we already had a few field trips in, in the previous semester. We went to the uh, to the ocean, uh, to the Mediterranean, and had a look at that, and also went to a natural reserve. And uh, both was really interesting to, to see that and to spend the time and to get that experience with your fellow students is just priceless. Um, and what I also wanted to talk about is I'm actually one of the people that is doing an internship. I saw in the questions that uh, uh, someone was asking whether it's mandatory uh, to, to do an internship. Um, it's not. It's um, You can just do it if you're interested in it uh, for English speakers, for Hebrew speakers. And uh, it's, it's really diverse. There are a lot of NGOs, different companies, companies you know, like Greenpeace or uh, Engineers Without Borders, but also um, smaller ones. Uh, and uh, to me, it was really interesting to see also in which fields everyone could end up in and um, just to get to know the companies. Um, I decided to go for a company that's an NGO. It's called Vegan Friendly. And what's so great about that internship for me is that I can combine what I've done in the past with my HR background, with everything that I've learned uh, so far in my degree. So I'm, I'm supporting the HR department at the moment, but I'm also supporting um, something that is called eco-friendly. It's uh, yeah, promoting an eco-friendly life uh, for companies and um, for individuals. Um, so I can really use what I'm learning now and uh, this is really great. Um, so I highly recommend doing the internship. It's also not too much 
uh, time-wise. Uh, it's limited to a certain amount of hours each week so that you can really still focus on your studies. This is still your priority, but at the same time, you get the chance to get experience um, in, in the Israeli market, in the fields, in the NGOs um, that you're interested in. So highly recommended for everyone who's not already working like Leila is, um, because yes, it's additional uh, workload, obviously. Um, so yeah, uh, what I also wanted to say is that there is an organization which is called the Tau International for all the international students. It's an organization that is really helping everyone to um, get all the information they need. Uh, they are organizing events where people can come together. Also people not only from our degree, but from all the other degrees as well. They are um, giving tours uh, in different parts of the city, but also on campus. And uh, they are always there whenever you have a question. So you're never you're never alone. First of all, you're never alone because, um, like our our course right now, we are um, it's like a school class from from back in the days. Uh, we're really connected. Uh, everyone supports it supports each each other. And as Leila said, we all have the same interest, and it's really cool. It's really um, combining everyone and bringing everyone close together. Um, but again, you're also not alone because there's a lot of support from the university, from Lee especially. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend um, applying for this master program. I wanted to say that if you have any further questions, um, just look me up on LinkedIn. My name is written down here. You can just um, contact me whenever you have questions that you want to ask in private. And um, one last tip, if you do decide to apply and if you do decide to, um, uh, if you get accepted and you, you want to come, then I recommend um, taking care of your visa as early as possible, because this is an issue, um, especially in September, no one is working in the embassies and the degree starts in October. So if you're coming from abroad, make sure to get your visa in time. This is just like a personal advice for me. All right, so thanks a lot. If you have any questions, um, you can probably ask in the chat or ask me later on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diana. Um, and I think that we're, we're here for, for questions now. Yes, there are a few questions in the I think I will go over and we will answer. Uh, the first question is whether this master is more practical or more theoretical, because I already have a master. I think it was answered partially. Uh, I think our program uh, combines both aspects. Uh, obviously, uh, you will have uh, you will have to study the uh, theoretical, and there are core courses and in introductory courses, but you will, we also have the very practical aspect of the program, whether it's uh, field trips, the internship, and as Leila mentioned, uh, being very active uh, in, in your classwork is also uh, required. Um, anyone wants to, to add? I, so you, you need to compare what you mean by practical and theoretical. So this is a this is a theoretical. I mean, from from my perspective, it's not theoretical program since you have even sem you have like four seminars and you have uh, field works and you have final project and internship. So you have a very heavy practical uh, approach. Well, if we apply for this program for university credentials from their side, this is like a practical program, not theoretical. Theoretical is one way you learn equations and solve problems uh, which are model problems so that's not the case here okay next question uh, is the internship mandatory uh, we mentioned uh, was already mentioned it's not mandatory it's it's an opportunity to gain uh, experience and to network um, is the thesis track another year of tuition um, it's it's not a full year tuition. You pay for the uh, one additional course that you need to take. Um, so that's the tuition. We will have a, a further session about the thesis uh, track when 
during the first semester of your studies. So you will get all the information uh, then. So mo most cases, you also will get a fellowship and a tuition covered by, by a supervisor. So that's like a salary because you already work uh, with somebody on some grant or whatever has happened there. Okay, uh, is it possible to get the slides? Yes, you. we will send you the slides and the recording of the session. No problem. Uh, what diploma does the thesis track gives at the end of the extra year? Uh, you receive uh, an MA uh, with a, th a thesis, which allows you later on to continue to a PhD if you want. Um, it's uh, it's an MA. Alex, you have something to add? Well, that's, you have the thesis, so you have a proof of your research work and the experience. So this is you look at look at this as a part of the experience you get in the specific research area. And for those who want to do a PhD afterwards, so this is the what you need to do for the for the PhD. Uh, MA without thesis, whatever finishes one year regular program in most universities, you will need to do a thesis uh, add, add on or whatever is required since this not master uh, thesis work. Okay, uh, next question, except of the field trips, how big is the focus on Israel in the courses? I so think. Israel, in many, many cases, people come here actually to learn about this because these are the field uh, case studies. And in some courses, you, you have this like uh, transboundary issues. And if you look into the uh, environment and peace issues, so how the environmental uh, water transboundary problems. So these are good, good case studies here, but we will look at Israel not as you know study specific program, but as a case study for problems or for issues you can apply globally afterwards. Okay. Uh, what's the average age of the students? <laughs> I think uh, from 20 to 75, I guess so. so <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we, we accept. A, so there is no average. Uh, there is a, there is a distribution, but there's also an unequal one. So it's like. <laughs> right. Um, question to Leila. Can you tell us what your first degree was? Yes, I replied in the chat. Um, my first degree was a BA in film production, but I totally switched careers when I moved to Israel. So um, that's the proof that you can come from any discipline and still be able to make it in the program. Okay, question. What does the internship take? When does the internship take place during the year or only after finalizing the courses? No, it takes, takes place during the year. Uh, you start around, uh, I think, uh, December uh, and it lasts about four months. It's all, it also depends on you, but that's the duration uh, during the between the first and the second semester. Well, well, let's see. Um, okay. Okay, uh, there is a question. What is the difference between the two year program in Hebrew and this current one? So this, this one is a three semester, including summer. And uh, so you pay tuition for the tuition is the same degree is the same. This program is completely in English. That one has half of the courses in the Hebrew here. Uh, but but the, the programs are essentially mirrors one of another. It depends what, what you want to do. So you just study here twice more intensively. One more question for us current students, do you have many group assignments? Yes, a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, is the tuition fees need to be paid all at once or by semester? No, it's not paid all at once. It's uh, in a few payments. Um, I think it's up to five or six payments throughout. So, and there are other uh, like uh, options uh, 
I can send you further information as you uh, continue with the application process. Another question, uh, how does uh, um, the program has a lot of Israel Middle East centered classes? How does this information translate to the international stage if we want to move back to our home countries after the degree? Yes, I think I answered this. So if you, if you take it as a case study afterwards, you use it per, uh, in the specific question, specific location. In general, the, the idea of the program is that you get tools and you practice these tools, whether this is a termship or final project or one of the field trips assignments, whatever it is. And then if you move somewhere else, you have this set of tools, you can use it locally. Since regulation is uh, different everywhere and uh, problems also different, but you need to have the skills, how to address the program, how to assess them, define them, and then how to, to solve them. Okay, uh, is the tuition for Israeli students covered fully by the Ole Hadash benefit? How flexible are payment schedule? Uh, Ole Hadash, Olim Hadashim, do... Uh, Leila, you wanted to, to say? Yeah, I can reply ah. that question okay. because I'm on it. Um, yes, it does. Uh, you get uh, half of the program on the first, you need to apply two consecutive years. So the year that you start studying, you apply for the Ole Hadash benefit and you get half of the tuition uh, within four months, they give you payment. And then when you finish a degree and you graduate by the end of the first year, uh, you need to apply again to the Ole benefit and there get the tuition again. But I, I also just recommend you to be a little bit careful here because if afterwards you want to do the PhD, let's say, or master thesis, they count this uh, this payment as a tuition as like you, you you got all your whatever you were, you were supposed to get. And monitor wise, it might be better to, to not to do it, but to get afterwards the PhD fellowship or master fellowship. We, we had this issue with uh, several students already that you originally go, you ask them to pay you for tuition for the program and afterwards you want to stay for master and you could actually go, uh, potentially could get more uh, general total, more, 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 more fellowship if you were doing that. So like do your own calculations. I'm just give, giving you the experiences of uh, others in, in this area since that's happened. Okay. Um, can you speak to any con conservation projects that staff related to the program are currently undertaking? No. <laughs> well, it really depends per, per, per subject, per course, per semester. So it's, I mean, we don't have any, you know, undergoing specific conservation of projects we are, we are, we are monitoring. So that's, Also okay. about the question, I mean, we got last question about species conservation. We, we, this is not our best strength. So you have a, we have a, a department of ecology, a museum. So they deal a lot with animal conservation. So we are more in the physical environment and related to, to, the, to, to those parts. Which documents are required to apply? So I think we will recover this. This will in the third slide, and you will get the slides which documents exactly are needed. So we've already covered this twice. The uniqueness of the of the program again, you need to compare globally and in Israel. So as far as we know, this is the only program which is one year, which allows you to also have the field trips and uh, internships, and uh, you're in the middle of Tel Aviv. So that's you know, the, 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 the highlights. Uh, other than that, I do recommend to go see the courses and to read the syllabus of the courses which are published. And then you can do a fair wise comparison between what is taught in uh, Ben Gurion and what is taught, uh, taught here. Okay, the question about the, this year's schedule. Um... I, I can't uh, say that it will be exactly mostly, mostly the same. In, but you will have, I think, the final schedule in uh, in, in April. Yes, so we need to to publish around that. April. But the days are the same. The days of the study, which are Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, with occasional field trips on uh, Sunday and Tuesdays, 
this is the structure of the, this is the basic uh, schedule. About the hours, it can change and it also depends on the elective courses that you choose to take or not to take. Okay, I think it's last question in the chat. For, for someone who comes from a social science communications background, what the, what's the expected level of knowledge for courses that deal with environmental law or harder sciences? Hi. So the expected level of knowledge you get in all courses is high. And uh, if you don't, if you know, for, for those who need to, to learn, you will need to learn. So we have complementary uh, courses such as uh, statistics. We have a courses on ecology. We have course on uh, envi environmental physics, which are, we think are required for you to understand today's environmental issues. So, but that's something to, this is not in the level of uh, geophysics master degree. This is on the level of people who are starting this is a, and see this material for the, for the first time. But uh, this is a part of the toolkit you will need to, to address. So you need to understand the physical environment. You need to understand the regulatory environment. You need to understand the quantitative environment, how, how to deal with this. And um, maybe just and from way, my way, point I of view. I think that, yes, I mean, the student can, so you can, can comment on, the, on this issue. So. Yeah, so um, um, we have a lot of uh, fellow students who don't have a scientific background um, and you don't need any chemical knowledge, any like any knowledge about formulas or whatever in order to understand what we're talking about in the in the classes. Um, for people that haven't had any statistics yet, there's, there's a course if you have already had statistics. Um, then you don't have to take that course again, um, but it's not it's not rocket science uh, for sure. It's not, and it's definitely doable also with a degree that is not in a scientific field. Thank you. Um, okay, a question about the final project. Can could you tell us about the parameters of the final project? How is it set and assessed? Please, would you give us some more examples of successful projects? Um, Already final project. <laughs> okay, so the fi final project is uh, you, you need to choose the topic. So then we have the series of uh, meetings. They sign the uh, certain uh, seminar where we meet once a week. Uh, so we have six students per uh, per mentor for the for the project, and then the idea is to show how to to do the writing. Project is composed of uh, introduction, analysis, and uh, your like, uh, conclusions. And it's based on uh, 15 papers you need to read about the subject you choose, and then to present your analysis and uh, and synthesis what you get out of these uh, 15 papers. So that's the project is a uh, it's a lit literature analysis on the topic. The, the final grade is uh, like 25% presentation, 75% the, the written work. Uh, uh, last question in the chat uh, about the proof of English. Uh, do older Cambridge certificates with level B fulfill the requirements for the program? Um, this we will have to check with the registrar office. Uh, I do know that they accept a, a IELTS and uh, also Cambridge exams. I don't know about Cambridge uh, certificate, so I will have to, to check it. Okay, so that's all the questions in the chat, if anyone have a question now. Uh, I do, actually, I have two. Yes. Uh, okay, so the first one is that uh, I read it somewhere on the website that uh, you officially can only apply if your first degree reaches an average of 80%. Is that true? And something was written there about uh, if you only have 75%, uh, there will be uh, uh, an individual, uh, uh, how should I say it? Um, so decision made individually. 
So can we count on that? It is written then you can count on this if, because we can accept, I think, the 10% of students which are in between and it's really case by case. So if somebody comes with the 77 in uh, computer science together with the geoinformatics, which is a very, very heavy degree. And, you know, it really depends where, uh, what, what happens. So this is for the uh, admission committee. We have a committee of six, uh, six faculty members who, who decides on case by case what, what happens there. So it is still possible to apply if we have a bit less than 80% of an average. Yes, but you need to get more than 75. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, and the second one, what I wanted to ask is that uh, you mentioned earlier that there is a Hebrew version of the program. Right. Halfly in Hebrew and halfly in English. Uh, can you tell me what the name of that program is? Because I didn't find it on the website. We already had the open day like two hours ago. So, okay. So you just look, uh, go to Tel Aviv University, look for the program, and uh, that's. You know, okay, you thank you. You'll find it. It's... Any more questions? I have a question as well. Uh... Uh, first of all, thanks Lee and Alexander for conducting the webinar. Uh, I'll be quick. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask about the statistical uh, uh, papers, which one can take extra credits on, which Diana was mentioning. I mean, as Alexander said that uh, this, the degree is more practical, but like I, I see that like in a lot of environmental careers, you need like use of statistics and different software. So can you just tell us about that. I mean, what kind of extra credits can we take in statistics and also about the elective courses. I just wanted to ask that there are different elective courses. Uh, currently, I am studying in a liberal arts college and like what happens is um, the, if, if there's like a good number of students for a particular course, then, then only that course is run. So I wanted to ask that, is it the, is it the same over here? I mean, like, let's say if not a lot of people sign up for water policy course. Is it like it's not going to be run because I mean, it's elective. So I, I just wanted to ask that are all the courses which are offered in the elective usually run or it's like students come together and then like um, they decide on which elective will be run and then whatever majority of the people decide, then that gets selected. Okay, so first of all, thank you for your mention about statistics. Lee, we need to take this record. So, if uh, uh, what's your name? I'm sorry, my name is Yash. Yeah, so if Yash agrees, we need to, to cut this part of the question and put it on the website because we have very often questions like, Why do we need to, to take our statistics courses? Yes, most of people don't understand that. This is the modern job requirement. Doesn't matter if you work for movie company or you work for, uh, you know, some uh, for wild wildfire uh, detection systems. So uh, statistical course we have one which is four four units and it's both theoretical and uh, exercise. And then we have course another course which is on uh, science communication, which also involves part of the statistical descriptions. But again, we it's not advanced statistics and data science courses since we are based for people who come with zero background. Yes, the idea is that you take the scientific paper, you read and you understand what's written on the, on the graphs, bar charts and so forth. Uh, afterwards, if so I have now two students from this program who had previous degrees in biology and now we're actually doing, so they do some biomarker discovery. So they're actually doing three courses on computer science, but that's per, per research. I mean, these are people who continue for the, for the thesis. And one is from ecology, another one is from, uh, from bio biology, but I mean, it's very clear that there are needed tools in, in this area, but it really depends per person. So we provide only the basic statistics as, as far as we, we can go. Now about the election courses, uh, all our election courses take place because we usually plan the program in the way that it's like, it's very small chance that nobody will go to one course and everybody will go to another one. So usually there is distribution of interest between of people and we don't have too many courses. So I call it in university, if it's less than eight students, we don't open the course, but never happened here. All right, thank you. Thank you so much.
Any more questions? Who plans to apply? I'm just waiting for the open day before registration. Raise the hand. Ah, come on, only three people. Oh, like... Okay, let, let's see. Maybe afterwards we will have better, better scores. <laughs> okay, so if no more questions, then we, we finish. Thank you all for coming in, and I, I hope you I understand. have a last question, Alexander, if, if there's time. Uh, I am a second year student studying uh, liberal arts. So, I mean, I just wanted to know that can I apply before my degree gets completed? I mean, like when I'm in the third year of the program and yes. like, my degree gets completed. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, if you're last year, you can apply. If you expect to get your degree before the beginning of the semester, then you can apply. I actually do have a question. Um, I'm an Oleh Hadash, and uh, I was told by other universities that I was looking into that in order to apply, I would need to go through a sort of validation certification process of my bachelor's degree uh, from the international, um, like, the, you know, from Mexico City, which uh, is where I studied. Uh, so I was wondering if uh, in the international school, we need to go through that sort of internal validation process, or is the international certificate enough? Now you need to go into validation because to accept you with the, the international uh, department needs to translate the degree and the, your grade there to equivalent in, uh, in Israel. So that's... No, no, it's not. No, what? you need to submit. No, you need to submit your uh, transcript and diploma and it goes through evaluation at our registrar office. They yeah. determine the uh, your GPA and we we proceed with with this in application. So, yeah, so not you, you are doing this, right? But, but, but it's still translated. Um, I don't think uh, it needs translation. If it does, no, no, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's not the student. It's uh, we, we are doing the comparison. Yes. Right. Yes. So, yes. so you just submit the grade then. Mm -hmm. Easy, easy work. Can you tell us what the deadline is for the application? Uh, it's it's only just now uh, started. Uh, usually, um, it ends around uh, July, but it is recommended to apply as early as possible. I mean, don't wait to the last uh, minute, as early as you can. And if, if by chance we get more than 32 students, then it will be difficult to get in. So this year we were very close. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, more questions. A question, Alexander, you just said this year you are already close, which you mean starting in October. This is already close, the group. No, the one earlier, right? <laughs> yeah, the previous one, yeah, they, were, they already did one third, yes. All right. Well, it's not too much time until next October. I have another couple of questions. Yes. Um, question one, uh, given the pandemic situation, is the program going to be offered in a hybrid format in case we get infected and will we be able to like study from home at all? Or is that not a thing? Uh, and also, are there discounts on stuff like the application fee if we get an early application? So about uh, COVID issues, we are regulated, meaning that we were teaching in the in the last semester it was all in classes but people who did, couldn't come they could uh, do it uh, outside the lectures were supposed to either translate the class in uh, zoom during the class or to publish the recordings afterwards so that's the condition and obviously some people didn't come i guess and some people were coming all the time um, about the discounts i don't know so it's up to 
to you if you know something? No, there is no discounts for early application. Perhaps there is some sort of a small discount if you pay the tuition in one amount, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But if you receive uh, OLE assistance, I don't think it's relevant for you. Um, our, our tuition is already budgeted, so there's no <laughs> way to have uh, like a discount. But there are scholarships you can look for many scholarships. So uh, if you want, I can send you a link to to a site with a list of all the scholarships so you can check. There's one more question in the chat about the spring semester and taking courses within this semester already. No, it's it's not possible. Yes, the program starts in October and finishes in uh, in August, so we, we we don't have the intermediate, I guess, maybe a semester B because it's built that we have the uh, core and uh, basic courses in the first semester, and then more electives are coming afterwards. And so that's that's the plan. Any more last minute questions? Last five minute questions? Okay, then thank you all very much. I hope see you next year.